Okay, I let the frame dry and I skipped ahead a little bit. And as you can see, there's some nice cracks there going in an outward direction. It's because we stroked the um, medium and our paint radiating from the center. And if you compare the two, you can see there's less cracks in this one, but they're bigger. And that's because I think I put it on a little thicker. The thinner you put it on, um, the thinner the cracks, but both actually look nice. And I finished up my frame for now by um, using a Deerfoot stippler brush and black paint. And I just kind of tapped and scrubbed into the edge. Not a thick coat of paint. You don't want ridges in there because you want your little center to fit in there nicely. So we're going to put the frame aside and we're going to concentrate on the bare fur. And again, I jumped ahead a little bit and I did the main floating and basing on the bear. First I base coated his outfit and his head with um, probably three or four coats, thin coats, because it had to cover the red. And if it's not a perfect coverage, that's okay, because there's going to be a lot going on top of it. And I wanted to um, finish at least this part of his clothes, because we're going to, you know, pull the hair over. So you don't want to go back after you did the fur and have to shade and stuff. So you want to do that part first. Um, then we're going to start working on his toning and his fur. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the um, medium dark brown. The colors will be in the pattern. And I think this one is light chocolate. And I'm going to start brushing in a like a washy shade over. Just to give it some toning and to establish our light and dark areas, things like that. Now you can see I painted in the eyes and the nose and the little mouth in black. And we're going to be going over that, but that's okay. So you don't want to worry about that too much. Um, it's more or less just to keep your to keep an eye where you're where you're going. It'll probably be covered with fur in that, and we'll have to redefine it later. The thing with painting bears and fur is it's a lot of layers. And there's no set amount as to how many when I paint mine anyway. I kind of just go back and forth as many times as it needs. And it's not hard, like people think it's pretty hard to do, or sometimes it looks hard for some people. Um, but it's very controllable. It's nothing that you'd have to do all at once, and if you make a mistake, you just put another layer on it. You could lighten it and darken it and tone it and get it how you want. Now, he's going to be kind of a medium brown bear when we're done. So I started light. And I'm going to shade around his areas his usual areas and kind of a mottled shade and then around his muzzle a little bit now see we're going right over his eyes that's okay and this is going to give him a little bit of shape you don't even have to draw that muzzle line if you if you want to freehand it you can do that And you might want to put little lines around his eyes. So you can see this is kind of just a washy. Oh, shade. And then I'm going to go on the inside of the muzzle too. You don't want anything stark. There we go. 
go. You're kind of moving the paint around with the water. I'm only putting paint on the tip of the brush. I like um, floating with angle brushes for this reason. It's really easy to just load up about that much of the brush. And then the back end is water. So if I want to move something, I can take that, they call that the heel, and move it around. So we're going to put them in a wash like that. And one more line under his, give him a neck. Whoops, see there's too much there. Now you, I just dip in water and blot, and you can pull it right off. We'll leave that a little darker underneath so he has a neck. Okay, give him a line there. Maybe a little bit more in the inside of his ears. This is a very loose, easy way to paint. Okay, now I'm going to let him dry and then I'll go to the next step. Okay, now that that under layer has dried, um, what we're going to do next is add the fur. And in order to do that, we're just going to do a couple layers of actual fur. Now you could use a liner, you could use a tiny liner, and a lot of times I use an angle shader. And the reason being is um, I use it on the chisel edge. I'm going to load up my brush. Hold on. I use it on the chisel edge and it gives a little bit of stability. And what I'm going to do is start at the muzzle and I'll start at the forehead here and start pulling out. Now, as you can see, this is too, too much like the background. I picked up the background color. I'm going to go one color lighter and you want your your paint a little bit wet but not too wet you don't have to paint every hair you're just gonna throw in some texture here see how I'm doing that on the chisel edge you could use your liner for this and I'm gonna go over the edge a little bit kind of smush it. I hope you could see that. We're going to start at the muzzle. Start in and work your way out. You know, be aware of your fur direction. This will give it some texture. And don't be afraid to go over your line a little. See, I like how the brush will sit on there and kind of give you soft soft lines for that first layer. The under layer should be um, a softer stroke. You don't want every little hair to show because your, your um, contrast would be too high. It'll look too spiky. See I got light there so I can use some water and pull some off a little bit. My voice is getting froggy. It always does that in videos. So I'm going to work around the head. Start to brighten him up a little and see how it's going to bleed over. You'll get some fur onto the clothing. This is why we um, decide to do the clothing first. That's how it should look. That's going to make him look a little more natural. Now see how little paint I'm using. What I like to do for the muzzle is just kind of smush little fur in there. And as I said, we're going to go over the, um, the black a little. And you go over your lines that you painted in. 
because we'll re reglaze later. And kind of radiate into the direction. Okay, because that'll build up your texture. See how he's got some texture now. So now we're going to go back to our medium dark brown. And we're going to start pulling a layer of that on there, the same direction, or the same kind of technique. And what I think I'll do for that is switch to a liner brush because I want a little more control with this. I want it to look a little more like fur. And you're kind of going to do this, um, you want your fur to go in several directions at once. You don't, like in the same general direction, but you don't want it like soldiers. See, you could tell that my paint's a little bit um, thin. There, that's starting to look good. And um, you don't want it where it's going to run, but you want it where it's going to move a little. And see how I'm just pulling kind of skewing it, each little stroke from side to side as I go around. And fill it in. Kind of relaxing to do it. We're going to want it a little darker by his eyes, but not too dark yet. We'll glaze that in. Any of the shading you can glaze. What we're doing with these steps is kind of adding texture. And by going from um, color to color, See, we want just little taps in here, kind of, but not dots like that. We want more like this side, so you want to blend that a little. There you go. Where it just looks like the little short hairs on its muzzle. Around his eyes. And we want a little darker in his ear. It's a very, um, I guess it's hard to teach in a way because it's, you have to kind of be loose with your painting, which is something really that I don't do very well sometimes. I want darker under the chin. Okay, and we'll let that dry a minute. And then I will be right back. Okay, we let that dry a bit. Um, as I said, we're going to be doing a lot of back and forth on here. I hope this doesn't get boring, but now that we have some texture in there, we're going to reglaze it once again with the medium brown that we started with. And this is almost like a float. You're using kind of a washy paint, but you could see the change. That you're getting some nice texture. And we want to go around his eyes. Because his eyes are going to be inset a little and around that muzzle. and where the ears meet. And I need to re 
to find a little bit around his head even though that's going to be mostly light later on you don't want to lose the top of his head and actually for this bear he's going to have his little widow's peak on there so his will be black anyway there and the same thing on the muzzle on the inside you want to float like a double float on this muzzle area and a little bit under we're going to want it a little on dark underneath his mouth because we want his little fangs to show up okay so we put some more dark in there and now we will go back to the base color it should show up a little better I'm taking a looks like about a two round it is a two round brush and we're going to add another layer of fur and this time we're not going to go all the way up to the muzzle we're going to do towards the outer edge because we don't want to keep darkening and lightening and the same with the tips of the ears We'll do final glazings on these, but we want to try to get the color pretty filled in now. See how it's filling in and how he's starting to look fluffier. With each layer, it'll look fluffier and it'll look deeper. The key here, though, is to don't fill any layer in too solidly. If you see that you're getting too solid then you want to go back if it's too solid of a light color add some dark over it and vice versa I don't have to worry about up here too much because it's going to be black but do you see how he's starting to look more pulled together each layer will bring and now this is only using a couple colors we're only using a couple browns. But each layer will kind of bring it together more. And you know, you like this area in here where it's kind of mushed together is really what makes it look fluffy and nice. Same thing here, these little hairs that pull over. And when we glaze this all, we lost a little bit in the inside of his ears you don't have to just do one color at a time you could go back and forth if you want I'm gonna bring that back out and throw a couple darker hairs there this is how we're shading and stuff see how controlled that is you want a little more shade around his eyes because they're inset more. A little bit on the muzzle, but not a lot. The muzzle looks good. Go underneath, as I said, on his chin. He's almost getting there. Let's see if you make too much of a mistake, you just mush it out. Okay, I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to go over my black one more time. And um, I'll do the final glazing and stuff. Okay?